EV versus cycles. How are they different? Which one's better? There's still a lot of questions up in the air about EV and cycles, and I'm gonna answer some of those today. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Grant and I'm the host of Remison Graphics, and today we're taking a look at the differences between EV and cycles and how they have different uses in the computer graphics world. We'll be taking an in-depth look at each individual factor to help you guys recognize the advantages and limitations of each engine. So let's go ahead and hop right in. When it comes down to it, comparing EV and cycles is more or less just comparing real-time engines in general and ray tracing engines in general. So let's take a look at those two. By definition, ray tracing is a technique for generating an image by tracing the path of light as pixels in an image plane and simulating the effects of its encounters with virtual objects. Now that definition is a little bit of a mouthful and a little bit hard to comprehend, so I decided to throw together a particle system within Blender to show you exactly what a ray tracing engine does. In this case, we're actually looking specifically at the way Cycles does ray tracing. So there's only a few things going on in this scene. You can see we have a camera over here, a light, a big boundary which is the camera's farthest viewpoint, a ground plane, a sphere for the light to bounce off of, and we also have this little catching light catching plane back here which is more of just for visualization, it doesn't actually exist. So this is what happens if we actually run the simulation. You'll see it's really quick and something happens, but it's not really anything. That's because it's going so insanely fast. This is actually what happens every single time your computer takes a sample. So let's go ahead and slow it down so we can actually visualize what is happening in the computation process. So now you can see that the particles are moving significantly slower and this allows us to see every single light bounce that they take. So you can see they bounce off of the sphere, off of the ground plane, and when they hit the world boundary, I guess, um, it kind of, well, disappears. Except for the ones that hit the light, which go through onto our image catching plane. This is more or less how Cycles works. It emits a bunch of light particles from the camera, they bounce off of everything, until they either disappear into existence, which is the camera's view boundary, or they hit a light, in which case they are recorded as data, and that's what you see when you render. Now that being said, this is a very simplified model. There is a lot more going on behind the scenes of cycles, but this is a, a good start just to give you a little bit of an idea of exactly what happens. So that's how cycles works, but what about Eevee? Obviously, they can't go through the whole ray tracing process every time a frame recalculates because that would take way too long. So how do they do it? The method is actually relatively simple, however, it's a lot harder for us to comprehend because when you're working with a ray tracing engine, it seems like something in the physical world, whereas real-time engines use mostly math and geometry, which is a little bit harder for at least me to visualize. But I'll do my best to explain it to you regardless. The whole process starts with calculating and recognizing vertex data. The CPU finds each coordinate of each vertex in the entire scene and then hands it off to the GPU for the next few steps. The next step is vertex processing. The GPU takes the data given to it by the CPU, processes it, analyzes it, and if it makes sense, it creates a point in 3D space and that becomes your vertex. Then it does a few quick calculations to see where a face or a line could possibly exist given the data it had received from the CPU. And if everything seems like it's in shape, then it goes ahead and actually draws the faces and lines and individual vertices if those are present in the model. This step is called rasterization, and it also goes through a few other steps in this process as well, including multi-sampling and anti-aliasing to improve the quality of the image coming out of your render. Then it goes through a step called fragment processing, where it takes things like textures, alpha, depth, and lighting into consideration to make a color, or I guess multiple colors, for your face so it looks more realistic. It then applies this data to the rasterized image from before and kicks out the data as pixels on your monitor. So that's how the two different engines work, but what is the difference between them? What pros and cons do they each have? Let's take a look at that now. In general, ray tracing engines usually provide more photorealistic renders than you would get with a real-time engine. This is because they take a lot less shortcuts and use a physically based model to calculate what is what. In addition, they often support more features than real-time engines do as well, especially in the case of Cycles. Now, EV is still under development, so there are things that may change, but as of right now, EV doesn't support hair, uh, lots of different parts of particle systems, you can't make fancier materials and stuff like that. There's just a lot missing from most real-time engines that ray tracing engines have. And this ties in directly with the diversity and customizability of the engine, uh, because if you're missing features, obviously you can't do as much with it. 
Ray tracing engines also support true volumetrics and true reflections and refractions with, as opposed to the uh, shortcutted version that real-time engines like EV use. So it provides a much uh, more normal looking, a much more natural and a much more realistic image uh, than you'd get typically with something like EV. That being said, there are also a lot of negatives that come with these great image qualities. These include long render times because again it has to physically calculate each individual ray of light. It's prone to noise and fireflies while rendering. It's more prone to rendering issues and it's hard to preview what you're working on without actually rendering the image and therefore wasting even more time. So when it comes to time oriented work, ray tracing engines aren't the most effective. So what do real-time engines hold over ray tracing engines? Well, for one, it instantaneously updates every time you make a change, or even without making a change, it'll update. Um, it's easy to preview things. It's great for visualization. There is virtually no render time because it's doing it as you're working, and it has a much simpler interface and settings. So while it might not be as versatile and customizable as ray tracing engines, it certainly does hold the ground in simplicity and usability. Some of the cons include the fact that it lacks realism and it's never going to be quite as good and quite as normal looking, as realistic as, uh, as cycles or other ray tracing engines will be. Uh, it's heavily limited in terms of what it can do, at least EV is at the moment. I know there are some engines that can do a lot, but in the end they are still limited by one factor or another. They take shortcuts, so what you're seeing isn't actually like a real world example, often it's usually approximated or just some, some weird uh, programming trickery that will make some things look okay, but it won't make it look absolutely perfect. Um, and these include things like false shadows, false reflections, and refractions, so you won't be getting the true data out of those, they're usually approximated. And also many real-time engines lack uh, simulation ability or have very poor performance with simulations because in addition to having to calculate the graphics in real time, it's also having to calculate the physics in real time. So in the end, what is each best for and which one best suits you? Well, if you're planning on making something VFX or CGI oriented, something that needs to be very realistic or absolutely stunning, I would strongly recommend you use a ray tracing engine such as Cycles because it provides a much more photorealistic image and gives you a lot more control over what you're working with. However, if you're planning on either doing something that involves work with real-time engines such as uh, game asset design or perhaps uh, some sort of concept art or visualization, I would strongly recommend using a real-time engine because they're very useful for that and they have a lot of great capabilities available for that purpose. So there you have it. That's the difference between ray tracing and real-time rendering engines, or in the case of Blender, the difference between Cycles and Eevee. Hopefully this provides you guys with a little bit more insight about what they do and what they're best for. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I read almost every single comment that comes through my channel and I try to reply to all of them. In addition, if you noticed any false information or errors I made in this video, please leave a comment down below so I can correct it. I'd also like to say thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. You guys are the best. If you guys would like to become a patron, you're more than welcome to. However, you don't have to. You can just enjoy the content for free forever. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.